pictures of them. Well, tell us all. Well, like some wise old woman of the tribe, I have checked out the little newcomer and can at least report that he's all there. Ten little fingers, ten little toes, all in the right places. No raving beauty, but then who is it two weeks? Oh, little darling. And hair? Nothing much to speak of. And what there is is ginger. Oh, dear. He's also got a ferocious squint and a, a delicate yellow complexion due to the little lad coming aboard with a mild case of jaundice. But half of us do, apparently. And Mother? Mother's doing fine. But? Well, she's tired, I suppose. Mm. And probably couldn't wait to see the back of me. Friendly faces and homemade buns. A woman like well. Mrs. Sykes can hardly complain. What about Christopher? I don't imagine Christopher wants anything to do with it. Uh, Audrey? One and six. Well, I'm quite sure that Pauline's motherly instincts will guide her. Oh, Dorothy, what do we know about it? Oh, well. Are you going to run over and give Mrs. Drummond the good news? Mrs. Drummond? I hope we're not expected to run errands for Mrs. Drummond on top of everything else. a stupid thing to do. What did you want to do that for? You could have broken my violin. Let's see. What's it for? What do you mean? A plate, of course. <laughs> What's so funny? It's jolly difficult, I can tell you. Play or something. I'd rather not. Suit yourself. I'm not that good yet. No? Dave plays a guitar like a professional. It's not the same as the guitar. Any fool can play the guitar. Who's Dave? Someone not worth mentioning. You mentioned him. He's my son of a brother, that's who. The reason I said hello was I went into Ash or something. Can me and my friend Alison have a swim in the pool? Of course not. I'm sorry, but it's not open to the public. Girls can't, that's all. Even on Parents' Day, they can't. Which boy in your school wears the biggest that? How should I know? It's a riddle, stupid. I still don't know. Well, you'll have to work it out, won't you? I just adore pictures of the lakes, don't you? I think if I was a little chap miles away from home, looking at that before I fell asleep would give me a great sense of peace. Oh, Dorothy. <laughs> well, that's what I hope, anyway. Well, that was a good job. Ah, well done. Thank you. Oh, come in. Oh, Mrs. Drummond. Oh, oh dear. I'm afraid you'll find us in a disgraceful mess. Ooh, I heard you were busy. I rather hoped I could help. Oh, actually, the fun's all over. Oh, but you are in time for the sherry. Sherry? I don't think I deserve sherry. No, it's rather early, but when you've been mass-producing art all morning... What's this? Oh, that's my picture of the lakes. No, no, I mean this. Uh, I've no idea except that it's been there for years. I've always imagined it was the not very original work of some former art mistress. Maybe a copy. Do you remember doing that at school? Copying prints, even postcards of old masters. Oh, what a way to teach painting. Do you know, I think I'm going to run off with this. I just have a feeling. Yes. Well, it's worth taking a closer look at, anyway. I'm sure no one's going to miss it. <laughs> He's coming! Morning, 1B. Morning, sir. 
I hope, one B, that you have no extracurricular activities planned for this morning. Mm, no little surprises. I warn you, I'm in no mood for games. Sit. Sir? Sir? Yes? Please, sir. Lewis wants to ask you something. Oh. What is it, Lewis? Cat got your tongue? Actually, sir, we all wanted to ask... Oh, do get on with it, Lewis. Where did Miss Sykes' baby come from? <coughs> Uh, why ask me, Lewis? What makes you think I should know? The point is, sir, there are some very peculiar rumours going round. Oh, oh go on! Go on! All right, all right, all right, all right. Go on. Well, now, um... Mr. and Mrs. Sykes made the baby together. Mr. Sykes is dead, sir. Well, that is sadly true, Dartford. But nine months ago, Mr. Sykes was still very much alive. And that's when he, well, when they, made it. But what we really want to know is, how did they make it? <clears throat> there are some peculiar rumours flying around about that too, are there? Yes, very peculiar, sir. All right, then. <clears throat> it's a fair question. But I think I shall find it easier to answer if we drop names and personalities and remember we're dealing with a, well, with a universal human story. It applies to every man, Jack, and Jill, obviously. <laughs> and you little lot better remember that there's nothing to snigger about. There's nothing shameful about our bodies, or the way God made them. It's only our dirty little minds that make it so. You receiving me? Yes, sir. All right then, let's begin. You asked me a fair question, I'm prepared to give you a full and fair answer. I won't talk in Latin. I won't prettify it by talking about birds and bees and flowers. Looked at without ignorance, human reproduction has its own harmony, its own logic, too. And I'm sure that any one of you engineering chaps will see at once that these two sets of tackle are perfectly designed to fit together. And that, after a few minor adjustments, is exactly what they do. I'm so sorry, Mr. Drummond. I'm all behind this. Ah, oh, so have you seen my father anyway? Uh, Charles, listen to this. Dear sir, I have nothing against coloured nurses, but in illness, I would prefer a British nurse. Because for us, white is traditionally in keeping with the hospital atmosphere. There is only one explanation for this ubiquitous British xenophobia. Closely guarded ignorance Ignorance and insularity, complacency, superiority complex, inferiority complex, pride. That's um, six explanations. All depend on ignorance, Charles. Ah, yes, well, see, I do my best to disperse the fog of ignorance, and few thanks I get for it. This morning, I gave one B the facts of life in all their naked glory. What on earth persuaded you to do that? Well, the dear little chaps told me they were being misled by some peculiar rumours flying around. And? Well, when I'd finished, Lewis put up his hand and said, But, sir, you sure you've got it right?
quite something, isn't it? It is, rather. And did anyone miss it? No. In fact, when Mr. Drummond put it on record that you'd taken it, nobody remembered it ever having been there except for Dorothy and me. That's exactly what I thought. Honestly, no one in this place sees anything anymore. No one sees what a shabby, no worse, shoddy-looking place is becoming. Now, listen. I want your opinion before I show it to Philip. Well, it's, it's charming. And? Do you still think it's the work of some ferociously talented art mistress? <laughs> well, no. No, with my back to the wall, I do have to admit that it looks a bit like a holiton. That's exactly what I thought. Go! One, two, three, one, oh, two, three, one, two, what three, is it? one, Look two, at three. Me. I am one, looking two, at you, Dunder. One, two, one, two, three, 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 I think we have good and challenging courses established now, but whether or not we have the horses, only time will tell. I suspect this won't be an outstanding year, but then I am often, thank God, proved wrong. Yes, Patrick? The unfortunate fact is that an epidemic of erotomania is sweeping the school. Uh, by which I mean naturally sweeping the boys, not, not staff. Patrick, is erotomania quite what you mean? Isn't the definition of erotomania something like uh, insanity caused by love? I agree, an epidemic of that would be alarming. Mm, I think what I mean is perfectly clear, Head Master. I mean an epidemic of unhealthy sex curiosity and silly romanticism. Does anyone want to disagree? Yes, I do. Because I think what you call erotomania, Patrick, is a perfectly legitimate need for honest sexual education. <sighs> sexual education is no part of our approved curriculum. No, it isn't. But perhaps it ought to be. Sex education is no part of the curriculum in any single Brighton Authority school, but the illegitimate birth rate is the highest in the south of England. Oh, Charles, Charles, really, is illegitimacy our concern with an exclusively male population of boys under 14? Uh, the kind of thing that Patrick is talking about, and I agree with his observations up to a point, well, it, it's something that one normally expects to affect those boys who are, well, how shall I put it, uh, least burdened with intellect. However, in the case of my own form, suddenly even the brightest boys have developed distressingly one-track minds. It's all love and spooning and three minutes pleasure and nine months pain. There's decadence is just around the corner. <laughs> I can smell it in the air. Christopher, decadence? Well, there's more violin playing than usual, George. Oh, yes, and there's a little weed gold black. Well, no <laughs> gold black, the big black eyes and the list that I'm yet to be convinced is real. So it's taken to carrying this box around with a mouldy bunch of violets in it. It's mad to tell you about it, too. I'm sure you've all heard the story. Violets from the grave of my sweetheart, Emily. <laughs> Dutty little hooligan. One of these days, I'll take that damn box, throw it on the ground and jump on it. <laughs> well, if these are genuine fears, does anyone have any suggestions? Well, we could burn a few books. Edgar Allan Poe, for a start. I should like to drop those unnatural ballroom dance classes. May I suggest we make use of the swimming pool earlier than usual, while the water's good and cold? <laughs> hey, it's a girl! <laughs> Where? She was standing by the pool. God, he saw a girl! <laughs> Rubbish. Don't talk absolute rot. Goldblatt has an overactive imagination. <laughs> it's, it's lack of proper exercise. Line up, boys. This side. I said this side! Right. That's right. Parker, what's the matter with you, boy? Feeling the cold? Don't oh, eat such a fairy. Right? That's right. Ready? One, two, three.
say something, Dorothy? Uh, no, I don't think so, Edmonster. So, Mrs. Drummond has taken our little painting to Brighton for expert advice. Yes, it's all rather exciting, isn't it? Sort of a detective story in its way. Right up your street, Dorothy. Oh, it's up my street, yes. Am I to infer from that that someone doesn't like the idea of her taking it? Well, you know how it is with little hothouse communities like ours. I mean, petty jealousies and grievances do tend to flourish, don't they? You see, Mrs. Drummond made such a point of not being part of the school, of leaving everything to Audrey, and then Susan. She was used to being the only one to know about the arty side of things, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, well, I can't stand around here gossiping all day. Philip, I'm very bad at suspense. Well, I'm sorry, darling, but it's just that Holliton was very popular with imitators. Now, the points we have to start from are these. Is there any record of Holliton ever having painted such a picture? And he wasn't much of a portraitist, as you know. Is there any evidence of the painting having been shown or sold? Any evidence that he was in the right place at the right time? Because, in fact, those clothes look out of, they look out of fashion, to put it mildly. But those sleeves, for instance, they were passe before Holliton was even born. And then again, if it's a local couple painted on their own estate, well... Everything we know about Holliton suggests he felt nothing but horror and contempt for the countryside. Would no more have ventured upon the muddy roads of Sussex than take up pig farming. But Philip, it really does look like a Holliton, doesn't it? Yes, it, uh, it looks pretty much like one, I agree. Yes, it's, it's charming. But a Holliton, it ain't. Uh. Well, thanks for looking. I don't mention it. Shall we unpack the silver? Yeah. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Business is flourishing. I'm in the rudest of health. I even have a relatively easy conscience. What more could an old solitary like me ask for? A bad conscience, maybe. I thought you were expecting somebody. No. All right, fine, OK. Now, just tell me, out of interest, how much would a genuine Holliton have been worth? Well, that size? Yes. And with its rarity value as a portrait, I don't know. 1,500 pounds? Maybe 2,000? Oh, dear God, I wish I hadn't asked. Well, you don't need money, do you? Oh, no, not in the least. But the school does. I've been amusing myself with fantasies of earning its undying gratitude. I see. I'm exaggerating, of course. Even so, I should like to earn something more than polite indifference. You see, the Durham School can perfectly well forget all about me. But what do I see right outside my bedroom window? I see the Durham School. What do I hear when I want to loll in peace with the Sunday morning newspapers. I, I hear boys shouting and swarming over the playing field. The school bell reminds me to put on the evening meal, even. <sighs> and yet I've no use there, I've no function. George insists I'm always welcome and never required. And the fact is I don't ever feel welcome. I'm not even sure Susan's an ally anymore. Got it. 
rich and creamy. It makes all fabrics flow beautifully. It makes softness deep and surprising. It gives new vitality to each and every fiber. Makes colors sing and fly. That's comfort. There are some rather enticing features on Hitachi's new FST televisions. From a new computer-controlled teletext system, Fastext, for those in a great hurry, to soft touch remote control. But above all, these Hitachi TVs have the most astonishingly lifelike pictures. And with Hitachi's five year guarantee, you'd be off your nelly to look at any other telly. See this old table? I'm gonna sand it down. <laughs> Not with sandpaper, with this. With sand plate, you sand to a perfect finish in a fraction of the time. There's a sand plate for every sanding job. Shake hands. Big or small. And when you're finished, your sand plate won't be. Next. New sand plate from Sandvik. One at a time, please. Because you can't see where your oil gets to, you need to be sure it's clinging. Cooling, bathing, protecting every single part of your engine. Make sure. Fit the one moving part that sees to all the others. Castrol GTX, liquid engineering. Fison's Evergreen 90 makes England's lawns ever so green and pleasant. For the skeptics, here's a 49p trial pack. The Panasonic Dimension 4, it's a microwave. It's a traditional oven. It's a grill. It's a piece of cake. It's me, Susan. Susan? <coughs> hey, now. What's all this about, Pauline? What is it? Has something happened? You know you shouldn't be trying to do all this on your own, don't you? Hmm? Pam's offered to help out, hasn't she? Hmm? Why haven't you taken her up on it? What? Pam! Why haven't you got Pam round to help you? Because she drives me potty, doesn't she? Do this, do that, don't do this. Never do that. Anyone would think she was the expert. Well, she has had four children of her own, hasn't she? Great. A great job she made of that, too. Have you seen them, her kids? Some bloody expert. Are you getting out much? What do you think? Well, you weren't in when I knocked yesterday, were you? I expect I was asleep. I get so tired. Well, you ought to get out more. Maybe I can take you and the baby for a drive. I think it's all right. I pr he prefers home. Like Andy did. All right, little chip off the old block, this one. And, uh, where is he now? Who? Where's the little chip off the old block now? Uh, oh, he's, um, taking some bath in the grass, like the birds do. Did you see him? No, no. But, um, 
Christopher did. <laughs> Christopher got worried, did he? What's it like, Susan, playing pig in the middle? Is it fun? <laughs> Poor old Susan. The fact is, there's a woman like Mrs. Sykes in every maternity ward in the country. Baby blues. It's a syndrome we've known about for centuries. But basically, we still just have to wait for it to go away. Mrs. Sykes, however, is alone. And I imagine she's a young woman with few interests or resources of her own. Probably thinks she's not going to get any more fun this side of the grave. <laughs> and after that, she's not too sure either. So, I want someone to look in on her at least once a day. And I'll do likewise. Meanwhile, I've left the girl an excellent tonic and the latest baby book. And nothing too sophisticated, just good, simple advice and some jolly nice photos. But Leo, Pauline still calls the baby Andy's. Yes. But you know, I'm sure she's perfectly well aware that it isn't. Yes, but when you speak to her, she seems to have convinced herself that it is. She's not doing it for the sake of form, is she? Perhaps not. But then we could weave a different theory for every day of the year. One fine day, Mrs. Sykes is going to look at that baby and decide it doesn't much matter who the father is. You women, your mysterious, complex creatures. Do you know, in all my time as a doctor, and dear God, that's 30 odd years now, in all those years, I can't honestly put my hand on my heart and say I've understood you. Not even, if you'll forgive me, as functioning, reproducing animals, let alone people. There are ways of finding out, Cleo. Oh, I dare say you're right. You stick to medicine and I'll stick to art. Have you got over the disappointment about the painting? Completely. I'm going to take it up to Sotheby's. Oh. Ah, I thought you were plotting something. Well, it was something you said to me yesterday that persuaded me not to take Philip's word as final. Something I said? Well, something you told me that Pauline had said to you. Pauline? Yes, about experts. Oh, yes. You see, I have met Pam's children. <laughs> oh, Lord, yes, so have I. You've been hanging around the school again? Yeah. Why'd you do it? I like the grass. And the pool. Only I've been chased off. I was only looking at the old pony and some old bloke yelled at me. Are you going home now? Not exactly. Look. A bus ticket? Adds up to 21, don't it? 21! Does that mean something? It means you can get a kiss off me, only it's not good if I have to tell you. If it's fate, you can't escape it. I found this place, so it's mine, and I like to keep it tidy. See? You can cook on here. This is a tidy house. Living like this, you don't have to worry about money. You can live on wild things, like puffballs. What's puffballs? Big, round, white mushrooms, the grinder trees. Eat them? You could fry a nice sausage. No. I don't mind blackberries. I don't see how you could live for nothing. Still, if you've never had kids, you'd be well off, wouldn't you? You don't have to have kids now if you don't want to. What do you know about it? People can't help themselves, can they? Then they wish they hadn't. That's my mum, see? Before she had any of us. Pretty, wasn't she? Then we come along, the kids. She couldn't keep the house tidy no matter what. So I give her a new veranda telly, but the house is still a mess. You know that pony? Yes. Could I have a ride on him? He's not for riding. What's he for, then? I suppose he's there to be looked after. The junior boys take it in turn. It's so that when we're grown up, we'll have a sense of responsibility and remember to take care of other people. Who've you got to take care of? Oh, hundreds of people, Rona. Thousands. There's old people, children, women, poor people, sick people. And there's people who aren't so lucky as us. You see, we have special privileges at a school like ours, so we have to have special responsibilities too. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair. Isn't fair anyway. Besides, hasn't anyone told you lot? 
I mean, this is a welfare state, so I don't see what you could do about it. People don't need taken care of nowadays, so you're out of the job, right. You've hurt your knee. No, I haven't. Talking of blackberries. Yes? If a black man dies, what the others do? I don't know. They go blackberrying. <laughs> oh, hold on. Four o'clock. I'm late for my music lesson. and I've got a certificate to prove it. Good. What's that? This, my darling, is the most disgustingly expensive cake in the world. Rona, you talking old bastard. Right? Just keep off Rona. Sotheby's have five references to it in 19th century catalogues, and it's Good. either called The Young Couple, some of them are just called Sweethearts, but nobody has any idea who the young couple are or how Holliton came to paint them. And it seems never actually to have been sold. It's only ever been shown privately. Mm -hmm. So, George, how did it get to be here? Because the important thing now, the thing we have to be absolutely sure of now is, is it ours? Well, Mary, you found it in the ladies' common room. It belongs to the school. Well, that's what I said. Is it ours? Oh, forgive me. Yes, yes, of course it's ours. And um, although I've no actual proof, it's been here as long as I have. Longer. And I suppose it's as much ours, um, the schools, ours, <laughs> as any of the other objets d'art gathering dust around the place. Darling, delightful though the other objets d'art may be, they're mm -hmm. not worth two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds? Do you mean to tell me you came down on the train with that thing stuck under your arm? I did, and nobody looked at it twice. <laughs> and sitting there, hanging on to it for dear life, I was madly working the whole thing out. Now, first, I've got to trace the original owners, find out as much as I can about the painting's history, and mm. then we're going to put it up for auction with a reserve price of £2,250. So, you see, I really do need to know it's ours. Well, Mary, I think you must put it to the vote first. Whatever do you mean? The staff. The staff? Mm. It's been under their noses for generations. Well, darling, I know this is all to the school's advantage. And they never even noticed it, let alone asked any questions. I'm not suggesting the staff can either give or withhold permission. It's a, a formality, Mary, um, a courtesy, that's all. All right, darling, if that's what you want. <laughs> Chatham. I'd expect you to be returning from a music lesson, Chatham, not a rubber scrap. Yes, sir. So what's the problem, Chatham? Nothing, sir. Oh, Chatham. Charles! Pauline's baby's disappeared. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was an old man who lived with his two sons. I'm off to a residential cause for double-entry bookkeeping. Take this money and see what you can earn with it whilst I'm away. Some time later, he returned. Yes, Walter? Papa, I buried my money in a building society where it sat. Accumulating interest. Well done. As I've always said, better safe than sorry. Oh. And William, for once, let's hope you've shown some of your brother's good sense. Dad, I put my money in Lloyd's Bank High Interest Check Account and used their new unit trust scheme to invest in Britain and the rest of the world. 
unit trusts from a bank. I suppose they'll be selling shares next. <laughs> oh, well, actually, they already do. Lloyd's Bank new share deal scheme. So far, I've done rather well out of it. Uh, William! Oh, just as I've always maintained. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, bring on the black horse. Lloyd's Bank, a thoroughbred amongst banks. Do you know me? I haven't been acting myself <laughs> lately. Excuse me, Possum. <laughs> Sometimes I get lost in my work. <laughs> I'll have them both. <laughs> but wherever I am and whoever I am, I shop with the American Express card. With this, I can almost always buy what I want. It says a lot about the real me. The American Express card. Why not apply today? The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. People have always walked all over me. But since they stuck that thing up, it's got words. This sign is going up on all types of independent shops, from butchers to jewelers, and you can expect quality, value for money, and personal service from them all. It's a step in the right direction for shoppers. As far as I'm concerned, it's a bit of a headache. Still, things can't get much worse. <laughs> oh, no. No. Happy birthday, darling. Go on, buy someone flowers today. Here's a refreshing new act. Magic circles. and you can never find it, can you? What I thought at first was... Pam's popped round and took him for a walk, the cheeky monkey. Oh, my dear, why don't you just sit down here, nice and quiet like that, and you just oh, try... I thought, won't I have to give her a piece of my mind? But then I, I saw the pram over by the gate, by the kitchen garden, empty. And that was more than two hours ago. And that's how she goes on. She just tells the same story over and over again. But, I mean, who on earth would want to run off with him? It's not as if the place were teeming with passers-by all hankering after other people's babies. That's the nonsense of it. Yeah, who would do it? it? He's engaged at the moment. I don't know what he's doing. I must have been straight away. Mr. Porter, please! It's all over the school. Headmaster it seems that I'm the last person to know. I got the story from Crocker in 1A. Well, wasn't it obvious that Pauline was heading for a crisis of some sort? And why the hell wasn't something done sooner? Well, Christopher, Pauline's state of mind and this crisis are two quite separate issues. So let's not confuse them, Well, I, for one, would like to know what the hell's wrong with that, which is a damn sight more than poor old Leo knows how to deal with. Oh, Christopher, he's doing his best. He's being very kind. I know the man's kind. So what? We both know that kindness isn't enough. Look, for all we know, Pauline may have gone stark staring mad. Well, left alone with the baby, I go stark staring mad. What we're avoiding saying is that Pauline herself could be responsible for the baby's disappearance. Look, I, I don't see any way to avoid calling the police in on this. Or well, maybe not, but, and I hope I won't have to regret it, just for the moment, I'd like to keep this to ourselves. I have a well, hunch... God help me, George, I know the limitations of my situation, but you must admit that I'm more right than most of my all in on this. This is of the essence. Well, of course it is. And I'm well aware what this must mean to you. But I must have an hour's grace. I can't give up on the hope of there being some perfectly harmless explanation. Well, it's your decision, George. Yes, it is. Uh, do sit down. No, thank you, Mrs. Right. Robbins. I'm better off on my feet. 
helps me to think being up for us. And I've got a tidy few yes. words to speak. I'm loath to seem inhospitable, Mr. Dance, but you have arrived at a moment of crisis. Oh, crisis, is it? Well, there's a lot of it about, so perhaps I'd better get straight to the point. My daughter's disappeared. I'm so very sorry. Yes, this is where you might be, Mr. Z. A flawless 11-year-old, and I mean that. Not a scar on her. Absolute perfection. And the image of her dead mother. Well, what makes you come to me about it? Because one of your boys has got her. Oh, Mr. Dance. Oh, oh, you don't like the sound of that, do you, Mr. D? That worries you, doesn't it? It doesn't what... worry me, Mr. Dance, because it's a wild, absurd accusation. Oh, no, 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 sorry, Mr. Z. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know as well as you do, none of them's old enough. Nevertheless, one of your little gentlemen has got a hot for my daughter, because they've been seen. Seen? Yes. Look, I do wish, Mr. Dance, you'd sit down and Thanks. have some coffee. Sensitive age for a girl, see, 11, coming on 12. She's got no woman to turn to. Well, I, I, I've done my best, believe me. I was the first to admit my best isn't good enough. Not by long chalk, it isn't. And, and she's got no woman to turn to. It's just me and two layabout folks from brothers. Even the bloody cats are Tom. I think you're right, Mr. D. I think I'd better have a sit down. Oh. Oh. You're right, Robert. I'm perfectly all right, thank you. But I think Mr. Dance will be more comfortable on the sofa. I didn't know the fellow's name, Bertie. He was the school's milkman for more than 20 years. Dear God, I cheerfully have sworn I never set eyes on him before. No, you possibly hadn't. Mind you, he only lives a couple of hundred yards away. Huh? On the council estate at the back here. Yeah? Springfield? That I saw. The whole damn countryside will be swallowed up soon. Nothing green and pleasant left. You heard what he had to say, I suppose. Most of it. Did any of it sound at all likely? Boys running off with women and children. Mm -hmm. This is a bit of a coincidence, though, isn't it? Both on the same day. Yes, it is. A baby, a girl, and a boy who's soft for her. <laughs> Playing happy families, perhaps. Are any of the boys missing? Oh, I suppose it isn't impossible. One of the boys may be involved in this somewhere. What do you think, Charles? Are we to drag the entire school in on this? I think you should, Father, but hold your fire just for five minutes, would you? There's one boy in particular I want to talk to first. Now, look, Chatham, you uncooperative little devil. I've given you time to recover before putting you through the third degree. But this is it. Time's up. I'm awfully sorry, sir, not being able to help out. But it happened so quickly, and I honestly couldn't say who they were and why they did it. My guess is my school uniform. It's like a red rag to a ball, this school uniform, sir. I mean, parks down... Now, look, Chatham, if you're lying to me, I'll have your guts for garters, because this could, this just could be a matter of life or death. How's that eye? Not too bad. The hand? Well, I won't be able to play the violin for a bit. Thank heaven, small Moses. I'm sorry about Mrs Sykes' baby. Well, and the girl? She's been seen on school property and she's about your age. Does that mean anything to you? Can't say I know any girls, sir. Not locally, that is. All right, Chatham, off you go. Thank you, sir. got to take it back. I don't see why. She don't want him. Who doesn't? His mother. What happened? I had an argument with the door. What made you say his mother doesn't want him? She said if he didn't stop crying, she'd strangle him. That's not the point. She did too. I heard her. What would your mother say? Mum died three years ago tomorrow. Let me take it. Then they needn't know anything about you. Here, Mum. Not 
him, not it. Him, then. Come on, Rona, you've got to. I'm not giving him to you to carry. Kids, nothing but bloody nuisance, aren't they? well that ends well. A place for everything. And everything, or rather everyone, in their proper place at last. I've never been so relieved. Nor so exhausted. You're very quiet, Bertie. Well, to be honest, there was something in the boy's attitude to all this that I didn't much care for. Oh? They treated a potential tragedy as if it was and it was some kind of working-class comedy in rather dubious taste. Oh, Bertie, for God's sake, they're children still. You can't expect them to realise the gravity of a situation like this. Overprotected children, too, wouldn't you say? What do they know about life as it's lived by the rest of the world out there? Schools are insular places. Yeah, some more than others. Well, I must admit I was shocked not to know poor old Dance, not even by sight. Bertie. I do know you think we should turn ourselves inside out to change with the times. And you know I don't agree. Isolationism, all right, that's bad. Snobbery, too, and uh, complacency. But I see schools like this, schools that precisely don't change with the times, becoming more and more popular. Parents who can afford it will want their boys to go on learning a working discipline and the good old skills of leadership. What they don't want is all this Sloppy freedom of expression that's so fashionable at the moment. And technical skills are for other people's children, not ours. Now, like it or not, in 50 years' time, there'll be waiting lists for ordinary, bright, middle-class boys to come to places exactly like this, unchanged, and with no intention of changing. They're not only schools like this, but England itself will become an anachronism. Oh, rubbish, Bertie. Come in. Yes, what is it, Chatham? Shouldn't you be in bed? Yes, sir. I was. But I wondered, what's going to happen to her? To whom? The girl, sir. Rona has gone home with her father. Mrs. Sykes doesn't want to bring any charges against her. But all the same, I believe Rona will be seeing a probation officer in the morning. Now, I'm sure the probation officer will be both kind and helpful. But you know, stealing babies is not a habit to encourage. She said Mrs. Sykes didn't want it. Well, of course Mrs. Sykes wanted it. She's the baby's mother. Yes, sir, but, but sir... She's I... not our responsibility, Oliver. Now, you did well, but... Bed. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Even if she's not our responsibility, George, couldn't you have told the boy what's really going to happen to her? The sooner Chatham puts pretty little delinquents out of his mind, the better. Now, have some more brandy, Bertie. Dinner, white cat side, the white cat said, Go blimey, I'm 
sorry, sir. That's a bit of in your eye. I didn't know you. Be I, me. Is Rona at home? Rona? She's gone. She's been in trouble. Some woman come round this morning and took her away. OK, thanks. You couldn't swim. I ain't the best swimmer of my school. Only I've got nowhere to practice, have I? Where have you been? I've been so worried about you, Rona. What you want to worry for? They put me in care. It's great. I'm living with a lovely big fat lady with six cats. Rona! It's true. They said I needed a woman, and this one wanted someone to look after. I've got a room of my own with a knitting poodle keep my pyjamas in when I get some. So now my rotten stinking brothers can go stuff themselves. <laughs> you never answered that riddle, the one about your boy in your school, which wears the biggest that? It's because I don't know the answer. It's the one which got the biggest head, stupid. <laughs> Come on, Oliver. I dare you, you rotten, filthy coward. Come on in.